morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are and when you are seeing this, you're welcome to another episode of the Duke TV show. Charles Amongafu is your host and I am Florence. I am your co-host. So today, I have an amazing person with me as yet. She is a young lady who is in so much in the digital world, in the business world. The more amazing part for me is that she is using those common business we see as nothing to work in millions. She will say no to that, but of course, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so join me as a make welcome, Morintaya, to tell us, to share her experience with us, and of course, tell us how she has been able to move up to the ladder of success doing this one business. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I'm happy to be here actually. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here because I don't know. <laughs> she always wants me to laugh. Yes, I make people laugh. So it can call me for your comedy skills. <laughs> really? Yes. Okay. okay. So, who is more Pius? Okay. So basically, I would say more Pius is a woman helped by God. Okay. Because I knew where I was coming from. I studied in the University of Benin. And when I was coming to school, I came with almost a half, half dress. Like, most of my school, I only had a few clothes. And then, I didn't even come with, I think I came with 2000 and a bit too far. I can't even remember, Sha. But I came with almost nothing. And then, they gave us space in school. Because I didn't even have where to stay, honestly. I didn't know anybody around to uni join us at then, or uh, I did not have any relative around, so there was no place for me to stay. But luckily, uni join was like you can stay for like the first few weeks uh-huh. as a hundred level student. So then I came into school, I stayed in school. I didn't go in bed too. Fortunately, the day was free bed. Wow. So, so that's if I didn't have anything, but still, God was putting one or two things for me in place. So that's when I started school. And before I started school, I was actually using my, the period I was waiting at home for jam and the rest, I was teaching people. Yeah. Yes. So this business, uh, this whole thing did not start from when I entered school. It started before school. Yeah. So I was teaching people, I was getting paid, I was doing home lessons. I remember even taking lessons for a year, three years, getting a per child. Four years. That was before coming to school. So I already had this business knowledge, this knowledge of making money before coming into school. So coming into school, I I knew that, okay, I was not going to just be a student. I was also going to be doing other things alongside. Because I didn't come from a very wealthy family, so obviously I had to do other things. I think the first thing I started doing as a strike, I was selling a bread and blood that you got slammed my streets. Like it was embarrassing, but I am naturally I'm a courageous person, I'm good. So it's an embarrassing, but at the same time, I'm like, I don't need it's not like this embarrassment to bring money into my accounts or something. So I just continued doing that. And then I think as to call the strike, I went back to school. Then I started cake. Yes, I was selling cake around the University of Berlin. That was 2019, 2019, 2018, 2020. So you might recognize me for university Yes, I sold cake around most faculties. So I was that girl. But today, I would say God has helped me, like God has really helped me. I started doing this in 2020, that was during lockdown, when I, when there was nothing, nobody was literally doing anything, most people were at home. So I was like, what am I going to be doing to make money? I went around, I saw Bibi running around, and then I just stumbled on an advert. She was advertising perfume oils, I was like, okay, let's try. Prior to that, I have not used perfume oil, so it's not like I knew what perfume oil was, but I was just like, okay, maybe I could make good profits from it. So then I was like, let me start. I started with 9,700. Wow. Yes, I started with 9,700. And the funny thing was that it was the little money I saved, I started with. So it was not like my uncle gave me money. Mm-hmm. Yes. So the little money I saved, and I think one thing I did to, I told some of the customers to pay down. Yeah. Yes. 
So they paid down. It's called drop shipping now, but then I didn't know that was drop shipping here. So they paid down. I used their capital plus my little savings. I removed the profit and then I added. Okay, I didn't know because I added everything. Everything amounted to nine seven. Then I ordered for the profit. That's how I started basically. And today they've done well, like really done well. Mm-hmm. And I got was four years last week. Last two four years in business. Yes. Triumph Saints, that's the name of my brand. So how does it feel? How does it feel? <laughs> but you know you wake up and remember your baby, because this is your baby, right? I know your baby is four years. Like the first time when I remember that, oh I'm going to be four years July 14th. I was like, hmm. God, I dare do <laughs> because four years a lot of people are expecting okay, maybe you should have done this, done that. But at the same time, I was really grateful that I was still in business because I know a lot of businesses that packed up in one year. year. The more the period is <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Because it it takes a lot of tenacity, it takes a lot of resilience, it takes a lot of hard work to build a business in this Nigeria. <laughs> like there are times uh, I wanted to do it. There are times I felt like business, let's just pack up on to just do yes. But I realized that if I give up, what will I be doing? Yeah. Yes. Somebody says something now we give up now in this yes. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like if I give up, what am I going to be doing? Like I don't be there, no. And like I said before, I didn't come from a very wealthy background. So it's not like I had a sponsor somewhere or anything else. So when it was my first anniversary, I was really grateful that, okay, I've come this far. God has brought me this far. And one thing that really happens to me every anniversary is that I, I cry. Because I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I said, you know where I'm coming from. Like, if you know I stay here, you all know the anniversary you'll be crying. I know where I was coming from. I remember I was that girl that didn't have anything. I was that girl that sometimes my school fees would be delayed. I was that girl that to get your next meal you have to pray to God and also I know my anniversary my my intent to like dream back and remember where I was coming from and I felt happy that I still cried Sha. You consult for businesses. Yes, I do. Like last month, yeah. Okay, let's say you yeah, are two steps. Then you're in July. You are seeing you're in seven to ten steps. Only this girl, this girl. She is smiling, not uh, oh, not not this girl. She just does something. I like. I I think I think the most people are not making silence to me, but there's only one name that says. I know they do any silent moves now. Nah, feel that they watch. But you know, they just see their status. They're like, ah, uh-uh, yeah, this is one, do this one, do you get? So, but for me, Sha, it's not like anything I do is not something that just happened. This consulting stuff that I do currently started 2020, actually. Wow. Yes. But the truth is that people will not see behind the scenes. People don't see behind the scenes. They mostly see the result of what you've been doing. So I started 2020, but it was not official. Yeah. I was just doing it for people. Communication involves you talking to people about their business, offering clarity, strategies, and all. So it was something I, I do for my friends, I do for people around me. I could just come and meet you. How is your business going? You're telling me business going well. And with what, remember I told you I have a business. So with yeah. what I've learned my business, I could just say, okay, do this, do that. And then when you do it, you get results, you're like, oh, it's worked. You come back and tell me. So I realized that, oh, this thing that I'm doing for free, I can actually start getting paid for this consultation before, I think, I, it became official 2023. That was last year, yes. If I was doing it for free, I would do free classes. Like, I was just bent on sharing my knowledge to people. And not just knowledge, you know, there are some people that, they read, maybe they read a book, they learn something, they come and teach you know, like practical knowledge, things that have worked for me. Yes. For instance, the parent I had, she was, um, I think her issue was that she was not saving. And me, I've been saving life from 2018. 
I was taught how to save 2018, that was like five years. So I took out the process, I took out that, okay, in saving, you might have issues with saving, maybe you want to procrastinate, you want to live life, talk life, you know, and all. So it's something practical, it's, it's as if I'm teaching my own life experience, yes. So that is basically it. So it's not something I just talked about it was since 2020, yeah. But it became official this year. This year last year, yes. So how has it been? Because I am I'm, I'm still a student doing some kind of stuff. I say, ah, what is going on here? Like, how, how, how? I believe that's been going amazing. Yeah. I'm not sure you have his own challenge. But tell us, how has it been going generally? Okay, so I feel like consultation, uh, mentoring people, coaching people, taking accountability sessions for people, it's a whole lot. It's as if people are looking up to you, like, I don't have to explain it. So you don't have to be there for them, you just have to show up for them. That time I don't feel like showing up, like, I don't feel like taking conversation because, trust me, it's rewarding, it comes with money, right? They pay me, right? But there are times I am mentally drained. There are times I don't want to talk to anybody. There are times that I don't want to stay on my own. Like, I don't want to delete my WhatsApp, then go to a strange land, start my life. You are very much. Yes. You know, this social impact stuff that we are doing, it's sweet, so you are impacting people, but most times it becomes overwhelming because we are human, so. So, you tend to feel the emotions people are feeling, and you too, you go through your own hard times. And the only thing is that, and the only thing is that when you're going through your own hard times, people might not know, and they'll still be asking you for consultation or something. So, basically, I would say it has been very beautiful. It's a life changing experience for me. The fact that, okay, I get mentally, the fact that I get mentally drained or tired or maybe overwhelmed. There's the part where you see people's lives get impacted, yeah. like you see people changing, probably they tell you because of you, because of this strategy, my life has become better, my business is better, and it gives you this sense of fulfillment that, oh, I'm doing really something in my life. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. So I, I think I saw on your student's testimony where she said she maybe you know, I say, hey, bro, she has a lot of bread, no, it's not that easy. There's no issue, but then, yeah. understand that there's some things that, uh, you know, there are some things people do that I really don't fancy. Yeah. You know? When they have a friend or someone they know doing amazing stuff, they will always want to tap it for free. Yeah. That's sure. number one. Then number two, they won't really value what the friend is doing because they feel that, because yeah, 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 yeah. but not knowing that them themselves that you did that session on, 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 on the food yes, yeah. yes. Yes. for example when you're consulting for other people right it's a way you consult them but when your friend pays you for consultation right you are consulting for the person like as a consultant and then as a friend there's some certain things you might not say to other people yeah, exactly. there's some certain things yeah. you might not be like that you eat yeah, yeah, this is that your friend yeah, yeah. but then they make the mistake of losing both in both sides because they feel that the over familiarity stress yeah. it's okay I think what you just said now I talked about it on my whatsapp recently was it recently I can't remember sure, but I talked about it I was like first of all me personally, I pay my friends. I pay my friends to learn from them. Yeah. I have a friend, she's a brand strategist. I paid her for branding. I pay my friends if I want to like get any knowledge. I don't like because you're my friend, I deserve free things. No, because you yourself, you are paying money for personal development. You are paying money to maybe become better. So why should I want something free? Personally, I don't like asking my friends for free things. Because I know you will do it for me for free, but I want to pay for it. I want you to feel valued. And honestly, when you pay for what your friend is doing, they get to even give you more value. Like, yeah, they give you more value than a normal person. So, what I tell people those things that if your friend is doing something, pay for it. When you pay for it, you yourself, you will value it. But when you don't pay for it, like, is it not just. And secondly, I don't casualize my friends. I don't casualize my friends. What I do is that I place so much value on them. 
I place so much value on them. I have a friend. Her name is Renika. She does add that. The way I talk about her and my status, you you think that okay, maybe she's a mentor or something. She's my friend. But I talk about her, I place so much value on her. I have another friend, Ashe. I don't know if you know her. I've heard of Ashe. Yeah, I'm gonna be posting this. I know so many people, so I post different people. Ashe is a brand strategist and when you see me talking about her, you would think okay, maybe Ashe is someone that yes. But the other people I see that I know that okay, these people have value. They are my friends, but they are valuable. That's why you see me talking about them most time. Another thing is that the reason why you don't pay your friends, like you said, is familiarity. You see finish. <laughs> it's a finish issue because you see me in my vulnerable moment. Maybe like you see me at my lowest, so you don't feel like maybe what I can say to you can cause impact. That's why I think you all say this thing that a perfect is not really valued in the in the your hand. Exactly. So that will happen to some people. I mean, I try, I try as much as possible to avoid familiarity. Yeah. Because instead of you to see me finish, I will give you space. Yes. Because there are some things that see finish should bring. There is somebody that asks me a question that why will she pay me for me to? Uh, why will she pay for consultation? I mean, I don't understand. If you had said. Okay, I don't have money. Please do it for free. Like you are asking me, why should you? Do you know how much I spend on personal development? Remember, um, last year. Okay, I don't know if you pay for it, but I pay for it. When you have a membership, it's in my last year. No, I it was close to one hundred k. I mean, I I could almost cry. I like. We spend that the relevant they do not tell us on time. Honestly, honestly, like I do not believe that in my life I will believe one very day worse to pay for personal development. And when I even did that, I was happy because it's like a step to build. That way I can pay for some I can pay for a class of one million naira, I can pay for a class of two million naira, an event of ten million naira like that. And most people feel like uh, when you are paying, when you are paying, you are just paying the money. No, you are getting something in exchange. You are getting value yeah. in exchange. Yes. And since I pay that money, I don't think I've ever taken my mentorship for granted. Like I always try to. Okay, what's happening? You know that one. And if I really like life changes, but when I talk to you, I think to see a man for mentorship. I'm proud. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Oh um, another question I want to ask you is how has the digital space impacted the growth of your business? Okay, so basically, I started my business from WhatsApp. Like, I got to know about my own business, the digital space. Yes. So, it was when I saw someone's advert. In fact, 2020 was when this data stuff started coming, like the COVID. Yes. So, 2020, most people were at home, so almost everybody was on their phones. You had to just think of something that you can do online and all. So it was good. I was scrolling through WhatsApp and I saw someone's adverts. So my business idea came from the data space, that one. So I saw mostly online. On WhatsApp, I've been really talking to some of my students. I gave them all the platform. I asked them, Do you have this platform? There's a business. I don't have this platform. There's WhatsApp, there is Facebook, there, and Facebook has Facebook Story, Facebook Post, there's Facebook Marketplace, there's Google My Business. Recently, who someone chatted me up from Google and she was like, She wants to get so and so. And so. There is on uh, Instagram, there is TikTok, there is Telegram, there is YouTube, there is Google Ads, like there are a lot of things. We have email, yes, email. So don't feel like um, we are not we are no longer in the oh, like it's it now. We are no longer in that era where things are just holding days and oh no, we are in the digital space in the sense that your business should be put online. I have I think. When I first started my business, I was marketing physically. 
I was doing offline marketing. But I cannot compare offline marketing with the fiscal, with the digital space in the sense that now when I go for offline marketing, I can meet at least, let's say, 30 people in a day. But then imagine in the digital world, when you run ads, when you run ads in the digital world, your business can be shown to over thousands of people depending on the kind of ad you are running. So I feel like the digital space is more easier for business owners that it has brought help for business owners. Just also imagine you want to get something from Lagos. You have to go to Lagos to check in that yeah. thing. But now we have WhatsApp, we have Instagram. You can just type if you want to get, let's say, perfume in Lagos. Perfumes in Lagos, you type. It will show you list of vendors in Lagos. Do you understand? So I feel like digital space has helped business owners become better. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, that's beautiful. So, what's the next plan for triumphant sense? Okay, we just clocked for, like I said, we are four years in business. So for now, I'm not really like I'm. I'm not okay. I should maybe have a working shop. I should do this, I should do that, but for now, I'm not really in that planning, planning phase. I just want to take things slowly, yes. Because I'm currently doing my youth series, yes, and it's a whole lot for me. Doing youth series, doing Triumph Center, which is my perfume brand. They also do my conversation, yes. So it's, it's a whole lot. So I'm just taking things slowly. I saw a post, first of all, you see yourself in the next five years, 2029. <laughs> I, I told you, I, I, I don't know why I can't wait for you. I said, it's only 29. Maybe with my husband and one kid or two kids. I don't know how that flow is, but that's why I see myself. <laughs> oh my god. I see, the next time I see Gitter TV show producing movies. Music. A lot. Then you spend the media. Yeah. Yes. That is what we we'll see in the next um, five years. Mm-hmm. All right, so back to. Our question, let's say second to the last question. Tell us about your social impact. Okay, so um, basically, like I said, I started influencing people right from 2020. But I did not, it was not official. Yeah. So I would say I influenced about 2K plus individuals. Wow. I influenced them when it comes to managing their finances, when it comes to creating wealth, when it comes to making better financial decisions. And I have various means for influencing. It could be a one-on-one conversation. It could be in a digital space. It could also be when you pay for any of my services. So sometimes I try not to like pressure myself because you know when you come online, you you see people doing great things. Is it on LinkedIn? Yes. Oh God. I you feel like what am I doing in my life? <laughs> Maybe that's one of the reasons I'm not active on LinkedIn. I don't know. Maybe, maybe Sha. But like, you, you see people doing things, you don't feel like what you are currently doing that you feel is something big. People have done it like a long time ago. So it's as if you are trying to catch up. Now, one thing I tell myself is that I'm not in a competition with yeah. anybody. Yes. So I try to like, do what God has called me to do and make sure I'm on the right track. Because it's not, it's not just about being fast, but are you on the right track? Because you can be fast and you're not on the right track. So I replaced about 2K plus. Maybe it's small, maybe it's big, I don't know. You guys should be the judge. I replaced about 2K plus individuals through my various social media handles, physical conversations, and whole events for business. And I will, did I tell you? I have an event for business on that zoom. Wow. There is enjoyment, business and cheat my parents. Why don't you invite me for that? Uh, I like to post it now. You must know before. You need to invite me, I'll come and share. Okay, it's true. I host enjoyment. You know, in this social impact space, mostly talk about doing good and good and good. But that's how we as entrepreneurs need to really have fun. We need to cool off, have fun. I think I've done that in four times. Wow. Yes, four editions. What we do basically, we go to a nice restaurant, then we just sit down, we just watch, um, maybe they're showing a movie or something, we order food, like we just have time for ourselves. Yeah, I think 
be a moment for these people to unburden. Yeah, because yeah, there's a lot they going on. You know, most most business owners there's something they don't see. Yeah, so they feel they have this kind of customers always right. So yeah. they're thinking a lot of things. Yeah, so that would be a platform where they can like unburden. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, be true. vulnerable without being generous. Yeah. You're not just being vulnerable with someone who don't understand it. Yeah, you're in business. I'm in business. All yeah. of us are in business. Yeah. So yeah. What's going on? Yeah. So when you are talking about your experience, it's not strange to us. Yeah. Yeah. Having your experience currently, I might have experienced it in, uh, maybe last year or something. I will give you a practical step of yeah, 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 yeah. it's yeah. be a time to rejuvenate and also come back afresh. Yes. So what I mean is actually yes. is that actually the third thing because that time you go where you go over world and you don't need somewhere to just cool off. So that will actually the purpose of business and chill. It's nice food. We take nice pictures. What else? We do a lot. We do a lot. We have our lessons. We have our lessons. We have our business owner. You are inviting. Oh my. And what are you doing? I invite you. I invite you as the speaker. <laughs> I think mean, that will be very meaningful. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's talk about um, challenges so far in running triumphant the last four years. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've been through a lot. <laughs> One of the challenges is why guys, okay, let me just put this in for people that do not know where that is. is logistics issue. First, I run a, a online business, right? But definitely, the goods are not going to fly to my customers. I would have to find a vehicle or a bag that's going to deliver it. So sometimes, we have already um, packaged the goods, we've done everything, we will add a few goods to our customer back, and then the rider picks up the goods and decides maybe not to deliver on time, something came up and all, and your customer is already angry, like so many emotions flying up and down, and you're like, God, this thing to do this business thing. Now, it's actually part of the business. It's one challenge I've had, rider's issue. I'm currently going to do one currently as we are talking. Rider's issue. They will not deliver on time, they will not keep to time, and the customer definitely cannot be talking to the rider. They will pour all their aggression on you. The one thing I've learned as a business owner, you will not exchange words with your customer. I know it's hard though. Honestly, it's hard. There's a time when it's poor aggression. But I was just calm. I was just apologizing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And eventually, they got their goods. So then the men come and then work it out. As the rider or the logistics or the driver, as you got in there, just try and try to be truthful. Mm. Yes. Nice, most nice vendors are not truthful. That's why like people will not trust you. I'm a truthful vendor. So when I have um like delays like that, my customers definitely understand that okay, this one is not her fault, it's from the company. So that is one challenge I've had. Then I think another challenge is the economy. <laughs> I'm from where I know, but this is <laughs> But the economy has um, some of the policies that are put in place. They actually have impact on small business owners. For instance, when there was a time that was February, because I remember I was in camp then, we bought something of thirty-eight thousand. We sold it at forty thousand naira. For instance, the profit was two thousand, right? We go to the market the next day to buy that same product is now forty-five thousand. Wow. Leaving you at a loss because you already spent maybe the two K profit. You still have to add your own extra five K. Every God knows where you're going to go <laughs> to buy that product. And if you know even something that maybe let's say okay happened just today, it's I think yeah. it's, I don't feel it. it happened like two yes, two or three weeks. Yes, and so your capital is depreciating. Yeah. Like it's losing value because a business is starting with 100k, but the time you sit down and calculate how much capital do you have, it's like half. Another challenge that this economy has got is the fact that there are some products that are, um, that are considered how I like it. There are some products that you need to go through all this now that okay. you rest and all, oh. and by the time you are done. Hmm. You will not even see your profits. 
Yes, I had a story of somebody. <laughs> he used millions of naira to play his games, do everything. And I think what you are saying, and obviously, you know, as a business owner, you still need to consider people you are selling to. Don't imagine maybe I shipped goods from abroad. I got it here, I paid for all those customs, all those things they pay for, pay for logistics down to my place. And then I'm calculating these goods, is amounting to 20k. And then the name of my brand is 2k store brand. Do you understand? Like, you can only make things unstable, yes, yes. Expensive, unstable, unpredictable, and all. Uh, I think at that point, I was, I don't know if I was depressed or I was just down. Because I was not really making profit. I was not adding my own personal money. money. But I think which other challenge? Maybe other challenge. Most of the, I don't really yes, I don't really consider them as challenge. I just consider them as part of life. Yes. As part of life. For instance now, there's the part where that you are making money as an entrepreneur, but you are paying so much bills, you are using money, you are seeing money, your account is giving you millions, but you are paying bills almost every day of your life. It's like once you wake up. <laughs> the way I tell myself, I do not see it as a challenge. I am grateful I am able to pay my bills. Exactly. Because there are people that have bills that they cannot pay. I think there was a point I was I was really angry. I spent I think thirty five thousand naira on hospital, like putting drip and all and other drugs that he gave me. I was sad that I did my business plan and all. But at the same time, I told myself, what if you did not have that 35 k You should be grateful. Exactly. Yes. So I look at life as a challenge. I was like, so it has all of them been worth it, worth the journey. Yes, it's actually worth it too. It's actually worth it. When you see the impact your business has made over time, one, and when you see that, okay, this business is the one that is putting food on my table, yeah. this business is the one that is sorting my bills, this, with this business I can afford whatever I want to. So, like, it's really worth it at the long run. It's challenging, but it's also worth it. It's better than doing nothing, yeah. honestly. It's better, yes. So, yeah. what has been your driving force? The inspiration, motivation. Okay, yes. running your business. Um, so, my number one inspiration is God. Like, God has really inspired me. You know, I think I got my business idea, but I had to pray about it. I was like, will this thing work? And God gave me confirmation. So literally, most, most important thing is that anything I put out out there is something that I got from the Holy Spirit, something that I got from God. There's, a, there's an idea that I got. I implemented it, and I, I think I made over six figures in one week. The yeah, we current sales that I'm doing, it was an idea from the Holy Spirit. I'm doing, um, my brand is for right? I'm giving people the um, data for free. And I've made, I've made six figures already, and it's just for this sales. Wow. Yes. Secondly, my mom is another inspiration. I realized that the reason why I am actually this hard working because I saw my mom doing hard working. So she was doing business, she was going to a uh, chat to buy things, coming back, she would arrange that stuff. So I it was if I saw it and I knew that okay, it was possible. So yes. Then my dad too. My dad literally gave me my when I paid to upgrade my business, he gave me capital. Yes. So my dad is an inspiration. Then my friends People that are in the same line of business with me too. Then, when I come online, there are certain people I follow. People like Chema Ifanese, you know her. Yeah. People like Emeka Nobis, Niger Branchi. Like, there are a lot of people out there that also inspires me. So, that will be my inspiration. Those, everything I listed are my inspiration. Mm-hmm. Wow, wow. So, in this journey, have you ever gotten some kind of negative comments? And how were you able to handle it? For sales, Sha, I really just I stopped doing too much sales. Mm-hmm. I think busy I've really done one serious sales. Mm-hmm. So the other of you know why Sha, you know people always talk. You know that right? People always talk. When you are doing something right, you are doing something wrong, people always talk. That's just one thing you should know. So personally for me, nobody has ever told me that. Let me inform 
sad. Paper, you know this anonymous stuff now. Yeah. Every yeah. someone would have said it. I used to feel like okay, maybe people think that way, but I don't think I'm doing so much. I just think I'm in my own space. And what I think matters more to me and what God thinks about me. So when you feel like I'm doing too much, I'm like, there are people out there that have done like one thousand times of what I'm doing currently. So what do you say about them? Do you understand? I don't think that I'm doing sales in multi millions every day. Like every day, not monthly. So why do you feel like I'm doing too much? Okay, I think so much for the end of this show. Do not forget to subscribe. Do not forget to share. Do not forget to watch our video. Amazing comments. They are really appreciate that. Thank you so much. We'll see you in the next episode. Chinese Among Dolphin remain your host. And I am Flor